And we're on the air with Social Dweeb Sports tonight, coming to you from Clarksville High School Stadium, where to tell you it'll be the 100th meeting between Clarksville and Springfield. Yes, sir, the 100th meeting of Springfield Clarksville, one of the oldest rivals in the state of Tennessee. And this year, Coach, would add a little something to it, that trophy, and we'll be fighting for the bridge, battle, battle, battle for the bridge. <laughs> and it's a beautiful trophy. And, T, I know you were very instrumental in getting that put together. Yeah. So, uh, everybody owes you a big thank you. They don't owe me no thank you. It's spring for football. I'm out there always ready for it, Coach. Uh, this is something I had on my mind heavy at the end of last season, and I told Coach Wilson, like, hey, Coach, you know, I, I really love to, like, put a trophy to Springfield Clark. Well, he said, T, you know, next year's the 100th meeting. I was like, really? He's like, no perfect time. And, and uh, he gave me Coach Shelby's no- number, Isaac Shelby, and he's like, hey, reach out to him. I want him to hear it from you, your mouth. Because he's just as proud, uh, Coach Shelby, He's just as proud of college football as Coach Wilson and I are of Springfield football. So he wanted me to tell, be the, he wanted to let me tell him out of my own mouth. And uh, when I told Coach Shelby, it's like his ears lit up, and he was ready for me. He said, "Full force, go ahead, T, do what you want." And I, uh, I, I looked around, tried to see things that matched with each other, and I found out that the Sulphur Fort Creek uh, that runs through Springfield and uh, the Red River that runs through Clarksville from meet. Under that old wooden bridge in Port Royal, and I said, "What better, what better thing to do than, than battle for the bridge of the old wooden bridge in Port Royal that everybody knows about?" Oh yeah, and that's the only way you could get here back then. Yep, is by way of that wooden bridge. And uh, T uh, Yellow Jackets tonight got a big challenge in front of them because this is supposed to be one of the better Clarksville teams that they've had in a while. Yeah, it is. And before we get off that bridge, I want to thank Thad Doors for building that thing. Great, great company, the Ten Seven Barn uh, Company. Him and his wife Stephanie, they make those mini barns. If, if you know, get on Facebook, like their page, get on them. They, they, he does. He, that trophy is perfectly crafted. Though. Yes, it is. Beautiful. And you're speaking of closet before we get there. I'm gonna talk a little bit about last week. Uh, last Friday night, the Yellow Jackets welcomed the Green Bar Bobcats to the nest to battle for the Pink Curl Trophy. The 2023 campaign didn't start as clean as the Jackets have wanted, uh, having a fumble inside their own ten and a few bad snaps to start the game. The Jackets eventually settled in and things started to click. Parker Betts was 10 for 16 passing, 134 yards, one touchdown, 119 with 64 yards rushing. Jabraylon Ellis was on the receiving end of that Betts touchdown pass in the first half. Lamares Dallin punched one in from the ground for the Jackets. The Sanganez hit a beautiful 32-yarder to give the Jackets their 10th straight pick curl victory. Defensively, the Jackets held Greenbrier senior quarterback Nolan Carson to 76 yards passing. 67 of those yards came on one play and 10 points on the night for the Bobcats. The Jackets looked very settled in in the second half, and a lot of new Jackets were discovered by the Springfield faithful on Friday night in the nest. Tonight, the Jackets set their sights to 1-0 Clarkson Wildcats in the battle for the bridge. Clarkson come in hot off a 56-0 open win, week win at Montgomery Central. The Clarkson Wildcats run a triple option look offense while being in attack mode defensively. The Jackets look to go play spoiler in Clarkson tonight for the 100th version of Springfield first Clarkson in the first of the battle for the bridge. And as you said, Coach, Clarkson are buzzing, saying it's their best team in 10 years. Yeah, they have got size and they've got speed. And T just de- trying to defend that triple option, it takes more than just one week to get ready for it. Yeah, it does. And, this, you know, we're lucky. We, we always get the triple option. We always get them, you know, early in the season. So I always say back, back when Coach, you know, we was back and forth, like, hey, we get to see Clarkson the triple option again in the season. And, you know, Greenbrier week one with that uh, uh, wing T. We well, 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 you know, trained for by the time playoff time come. But this is just, this triple option is hard to, to face, coach. You can't be can't lie. Yeah, you've got to be very disciplined. Everybody's got to do their job, and if you get out of what you're supposed to be doing, you can leave a hole and there's a touchdown. And I was watching film, coach, and they have four different quarterbacks they played last week, <laughs> and they were running them in, and they were running that triple option and running them out and running them back in. And just, Fresh legs, and they were just running the ball downhill. It's kind of odd to see that many in a game. Is you know you would think that they wouldn't be able to develop a continuity with that many quarterbacks, yes. but evidently they do. Yeah, and then, you know running that triple option, it ain't too hard to do, coach. You just you reading that in, and hey, yeah. if he come down, I'm keeping it. If, if he go, if he stays out, I give it. And they run it so beautifully. And Coach Isaac Shelby, it's been his, you know, it's been his hallmark. Everywhere he went, even Northeast, that's success he had in Northeast. They was running the triple option with Jalen Rivers Maven. So that's his thing. He, he know everybody knows what he's gonna run. Is hey, stop it. Hey, if it works, you know why change it? Yeah. And I know uh, I told Coach Wilson this on the on the locker room talk this week. 
I said, this, this is Coach Holman quote. Uh, the biggest game for your team is week one to week two. You always say that, Coach. Yep. You're going to get better between week one and week two every year because you're going to learn so much about yourself during that first game. Yep, and I think the Jackets learned a lot about their young selves last week, Coach. And, T, hopefully we have worked on that center quarterback exchange because we had about seven or eight bad snaps last week. Yeah, we did, and they were just, you know, they were killers. They were drive killers, Coach. No other way to put it. And uh, I just hope the Jackets got clean. They cleaned that up. You know, we had three, tu- three turnovers last week. Yes, sir. We had three turnovers. It's hard to win a football game. And that defense played lights out last week. And I hope that defense carries it on this week because, you know, Nolan Carson, you take away that one big uh, splash play to flood last week, Greenbrier didn't score. They scored three points, and Nolan Carson has nine yards passing. Well, even on the three points, we gave them that on the muff punt. Yep. So uh, our defense held up very well. It's it's just a matter of eliminating mistakes and penalties on the offensive side. Exactly. If you can eliminate penalties and not, you know, you know, I always say, Coach, pre-snap penalties and turnovers. That's that's just you just asked them to lose a football game. And last week the Jackets came out and did that early, but they were lucky enough that their defense was playing lights out and. They can, you know, right their wrongs in the second half. But tonight against this Clarkson team, the way they were running that triple option last week, Coach, you can't get behind with them. No. You're going to have to get ahead and hopefully stay that way because uh, our, our offense is not designed to throw the ball deep downfield. We are dependent on a short passing game and a running game. Yep, and uh, this week will actually be – Without Jabraylon Ellis, who scored that touchdown last week, he broke his hand, I think, in in, in pre in pregame last week. And I, I, I don't know how it's going to be week to week with him or what, but I just know tonight he's not playing. Yeah, it's awfully tough for a receiver when you got a hand that's banged up. Yes, sir. And I know that we've got two other guys over there besides Jabraylon. Yep. We got KJ Chapman, yep. who is going to be out for the year, and then we got Cooper. Uh, number 54, big, what is he, T, sophomore? Yeah, I think he is a sophomore, and he, he got a lot of, and then I see Hayden Reynolds not playing tonight. I, I, yeah. It's just he got a few guys out for the Jackets it's in this non-region matchup, and I believe, I don't know how the coin toss went, but you have for the Jackets as always, uh, their captains, uh, number 55 out there, uh, uh, Max Baldwin, number 56, Matt Gregory, and number 24, uh, Clarence Cobbin for the Jackets uh, at the coin toss. And T, it is extremely hot and humid out here tonight. And the Jackets were getting a game on offense. And, Coach, it's beyond hot. And this is the sun finally went down, and it's, it's like a whole new day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least there was a breeze a little while ago. But yeah. I, I think it's even stopped now. Going to have to be awfully careful. Referees calling extra timeouts to let the team hydrate yourself and Giving them a break every once in a while. Yes, sir. And uh, offensively for the Jackets, they need to spread the ball around. And, and you know, Clarkson for, for me last week, Coach, against Montgomery Central, that wasn't a very athletic Montgomery Central team. And if the Jackets get this ball and spread it around, you know, Hayden uh, Hayden Hurst in the backfield. He was electric last week, number 88, sophomore Hayden Hurst starting running back for the Jackets team. He came out and he ran that ball. And he was sometimes, he was a blur, Coach. Yeah, he is extremely fast and sees the field well. And it's just going to be a matter of our offensive line opening a hole or two. Yes, sir. If the offensive line get going, uh, Parker Betts, you know, he can do some running, he, and he can pass. And then you take uh, Clarence Cobbins, Hayden Hurst. You still have Tony Pettis. This offense can go, Coach. And if they can get rolling here tonight, I think they will pose a, a, a little bit of difficulty for Clarkson Wildcats because Clarkson ain't seen speed like this yet. And something to consider because of the heat, it's going to be one of those games of attrition where – your depth is going to come into play early and often. Yeah, it is. And for the Jackets, and I know it's going to be, here come the Jackets, speaking of them. And thank goodness they're in their white jerseys tonight, too. Yes, sir. Clarksville, I, I predict Clarksville uniforms being drenched by the time this game is Oh, yeah. That'd be the darkest purple you've seen. <laughs> yes, sir. I wouldn't want to be wearing that dark purple jersey. And here come the Clarksville Wildcats. At class, they got them classic uniforms on too, Coach. Them purple unis look like Coopertown. I know you said yes, that last year. Yes, it does. <laughs> I told Phillip before the game, the whole field looks like Coopertown. <laughs> and uh, defensively for the Jackets, we spoke of it, Coach. You, you just got to do your job. Be where you're supposed to be. 
uh, play hard nose defense and fly around and play Springfield defense. And I think if they do that, you know, and I, I love how Duru gets upfield. And I think he made him and uh, uh, Max Ball in the defensive end spot tonight, they're going to be a problem for that triple option. If you stay home and do your job, Jackets defense can stand up and play ball tonight. And the triple option, as you know, it's, it's a high yield offense, but it's also a high risk. Yeah, it is. So you get in the backfield and cause some confusion, you may very well create a lot of turnovers. Yellow Jackets coming on the field, getting ready to receive. And let's see here, T. They got number 88 going back to receive the kick. Number 88, Jaden Hurst, along with Cobbins. And I said Hayden Hurst earlier because I'm in Jaden. I'm sorry. Jaden Hurst, starting running back for the Jackets, number 80, electric coach. Yes, he is. He's probably the fastest man we've had since the rail boy. He's, he's quick. Got a packed house tonight, see? They were introducing the first of Clarksville's Hall of Fame. And Clarksville, just like us, uh, but behind in their Hall of Fame. Uh, Should have had it like us, and this year is great they're having it, and it's beautiful. A lot of inductees tonight for them. And here's the kickoff. Going to pooch kick it. It's going to hit and bounce, and we'll see who comes up with it. Got a fight for the football under that pile. And we knew it was coming, Coach. They pushed it all last week. Clarksville's come up with it, so it'll be Clarksville football in great field position at the 34-yard line of Springfield. And see, nobody came up to take the football. Everybody was looking at everybody else. They did. If you're the Jackets, it is not how you want to start this ball. No, you don't. So it'll be Wildcat football from the Springfield 34-yard line. And T, we're going to have to be, really be on our toes to keep up with who's quarterbacking. For the we're starting quarterback number four, Jack so it looks like Wallace will be starting at quarterback tonight. But like you said, they rotate quarterbacks. So it's just, it, it, you're literally getting, I think, number seven played quarterback a little bit last week, which is the. The receiver on the left side, I think five did too. I think everybody on that out there right now played quarterback last week, coach. Every skill guy got a chance at it. They just interchangeable. And we got something going on with the clock. It didn't start on the kickoff, and referees over discussing it with the Clarksville coach. And as always, my keys to the game, coach uh, don't put yourself in bad situations. Turnovers in third plus, third and ten plus. Not, you already put yourself in a bad situation, Coach, with that pooch, uh, yeah. pooch kick. Uh, get Clarks for off schedule. You know, you know they want to run the wing, t- uh, the triple option. If you get them in behind the chains in lo- third and long situations, you know, they, they'll force it passing it. It's not their thing. They want to run the ball. And lastly, play fast, discipline football. Clarks will got big kids up front, not exceptionally tall, but stocky and heavy. Yeah, they are. And we'll take our first break here, Coach. I don't know what's going on, but we'll take a break and come right back. Back here where that they have straightened out the clock problem and Clarks will have the ball first and 10 from the Springfield 34. Might be some 
Gonna have a little misdirection that's gonna be met there and dropped by Duru. And T, Duru's picking right up where he left off last week. Yes, sir, and I spoke of the pregame coach, Duru Smith. If he get up field and make that penetration like he did last week, he can disrupt this whole situation. He did that time, got in the backfield, held him to a gain of about three yards. And we have got a flag, or we got a timeout. Timeout, Timeout, Springfield. I have no idea, Coach. <laughs> Drew Wilson must have seen something he did not like. And uh, tonight matchup, um, this marks the 100th meeting for Springfield versus Clash, as we said, in the first battle for the bridge. Uh, the Jackets lead the series 58 wins, 37 losses, and four ties. And like you always say, Coach, you know you've been playing for a while when you got some ties in there. Yes. I mean, th- that's been a while. <laughs> Uh, these, t- these two teams uh, first met in 1919, and uh, this game was once canceled because of the Spanish flu. <laughs> and these two teams uh, met before Prohibition and the Great Depression. We're going way back now. <laughs> I wasn't even around back then, Jake. <laughs> so it's Clarksville football, second down and about seven. Quarterback going to hand to the wingback coming around, making good yardage. Looks like he's going to be down and close to his first down. And it is a Wildcat first down. Football at about the 24-yard line. The great Josh Bay at home watching coach. There's too many men on the field that last play. That's why Springfield called that timeout. Great eyes. Oh, oh. We got a fumble snap, and I think the center was able to get back on the football for Clarksville. So, T, we're not the only one having trouble. No, sir. I would have liked us to get that one back, but, hey, you can't get everyone, can't you, Coach? That's right. Going to be second down at about nine. And, T, Clarksville running a lot of misdirection right now. That's, the, that's what they want to do, Coach. Get behind that big old line and confuse you and get you looking and searching. and Just stay home, play your keys, get the ball, and everything will work itself out. Going to hand to the fullback that time, and he's going to bang straight ahead. Going to take it down to about the 16-yard line, gain of about eight yards. Gain of seven, brings up third and three. Well, they're saying it's third and three. Ball on the 16-yard line. 10-10 in the first quarter. And the Jackets, you know, defense is stand up right here and, and kind of do the same thing they did last week, Coach. Yeah, we dodged a bullet. And this time, Clarkville runs it to the outside, and he's going to be down at the one-yard line. Took it off right tackle and came very close to scoring. Making it awfully hard on the defense now. Going to be first down and goal from the one. Just going to handle the fullback and he plows his way ahead for the Clarksville touchdown. And the turnover ends up hurting us here early in the game. Can't have it, Coach. Just can't have it. So Clarksville able to cash in on the turnover on the kickoff, making it 6-0 with 928 in the first quarter. Kicker on to add the extra point. Snaps good, and the kick is also good. So at 9.28, Clarksville jumps ahead 7 to nothing. As always, we'd like to thank our great sponsors. Uh, without them, this broadcast would not be possible. Southside Drugs, Freebird Bell Bonds, Omni Garage Door, Forklift Systems, Holman Jewelers, Baldwin's Barbecue, Sunshine Cleaning Company, Crowder Funeral Home, Alan Holman with Century 21, Rawls Paven, Wilkins Building Group, Jody Reynolds with Legacy Signature, Vision Concepts, 
West Side Wheels and Tires, Jeff Wright with Remax, Dunbar Lawn Care, Bulldog Renovations, and BS Brew Works. And BS Brew Works, uh, they broadcast the game every Friday night. We like to say hello to everybody at BS Brew Works watching tonight. And uh, for Baldwin's Barbecue, they knew they now have a Tuesday special, Coach. Tuesday? I knew they had a Wednesday. Wednesday they have the half price sandwiches, but on Tuesday from here on out, for the rest of the year, they have different specials. This month, it's uh, chicken dinners. I believe it's $8 for a chicken dinner, eight ninety nine. Ooh, Mike's doing it up right. <laughs> And uh, now they're going to pooch it again. This time going to be fielded by Cobbins on the far side. And he tucks it away and takes it up to about the 39-yard line of Springfield. And see, it's obvious they're not going to kick the ball away to Springfield. No, they didn't do it last week, Coach. Last week they Cobbins just pooched the it in there. First and 10, Springfield. And it's not because they don't line. have a kicker, because that guy that kicked the extra point put it up there on the, on the field house. And now the Jackets, you know, you're behind the eight ball. You're already down 7-0, and you received the ball first. You got to get going offensively. Jackets with Hurst and Cobbins in the backfield. He's offside. Yes, he was. And the referee on the near side caught it. And play. it's going to be offsides on Clarksville. So we're going to pick up five yards the easy way. Encroachment against the Wildcats. That wasn't even close, Coach. No, we could call that from up here. Of course, we do a lot of that anyway. You know? <laughs> and most of them we're right, too. So it's going to be first down and five for the Yellow Jackets. Yellow Jackets with trip receivers to the bottom of your screen. Bets at quarterback, Hurst in the backfield. Got a handoff to Hurst. He's picking his way. Takes it on down to the 45 Hurst, yard line. Where it's going to be second down and about three. And T, if, if Hurst gets a step on this defense, yep. he's gone. Yeah, he is. Just pure lightning in the bottle, Coach. Still in that trip formation. Betts takes the snap, looking to throw, and overthrows his receiver. Intended that time for Tony Pettis, but just overthrew him. And see, we're lucky that that one wasn't picked off. Yeah, it was. The safety was standing right there. I didn't understand that one. If I was Park, I would have took that one and just got what I could. Yeah. I mean, taking a big chance throwing that one. The safety read that one all the way. This guy's lined up off sides again, Coach. He sure is. Now he is for real. <laughs> he just jumps in the neutral zone. So that's going to be a first down, a Holman first giant down by way of a penalty. And T. Clarksville helping us for all they're worth right now. Yes, they are. And I'm never the one to shy away from help, Coach. No. We'll take it wherever it comes from. So it's first and 10, Springfield with the ball at the 50-yard line. Going to hand to Hurst. He dodges a man in the backfield, breaks loose, but still going to lose yardage. He fumbled that ball, and Coach. The ball came loose, and it's Clarksville football. So, T, two turnovers here in the first quarter. Clarksville up seven to nothing. He just took that one from him, Coach. He sure did. And now the referee's going to talk about it. Oh, he's going to say he was down, Coach. I hope. Somebody must have blowed the whistle to you. They said he was down. What a break. I'm, that is a huge break for Springfield. Don't think the Clarksville coach believes it. But. What a freaking break, coach. Somebody blew a quick whistle. And once that happens, the ball's dead. So we come out on the good end of that one. 
If you're the Jackets, that should be a wake-up call, Coach. It should be. You almost had two turnovers right here quickly within, you know, the first two times you've supposed to have the ball. So Springfield back on offense, second down and 11 from the 49-yard line. Betts going to keep it himself, cuts it up the middle, takes it down to the 45-yard line of Clarksville. Nice run there by Betts. Parker saw an alley there, Coach, and he hit it. Great hard running there by Parker. You know, he's not as big as Crenshaw, but so far he's been impressive running the football. Yeah, he has. Springfield trying to spread Clarksville out. Looking to throw down the sideline. Got a man open and in and out of the hands of, is that Pettis? Yes, sir. He I'm had not, him. He had him too, Coach. Yeah. I'm he not real him. sure, though, that if he catches it, he's not out of bounds. I, I think when he fell, his two feet fell in bounds. He had him. He just did, couldn't haul it in. He had the man beat. So that's going to bring up fourth down and about five. And Springfield, no intention of kicking the football unless it's a quick kick. And they've got Pettis in, and that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to quick kick it. Great punt. Somebody needs to down it. Great job. Parker stocked it on the one-yard line. So Clarksville got 99 yards to go after the great kick by Pettis. And see, it's a good place for us to do something on defense, create a turnover. Yeah, it is. Perfect place. You know they're going to run it out of there, Coach. Yes, they are. I wouldn't doubt to see a big fullback trying to turn away just to get out of the shadow of his goal post. Yep. But you hit it on the head before the game. We just can't afford turnovers and penalties and things to put us behind the chain. We can't. Clarksville with the football, going to just let the fullback run it out. He's going to pick up about four yards. Clarksville running a no huddle offense right now. And going to Hand to the fullback again. He's a load. He's a big boy. Get a number on that, Coach. Yeah, I think it is it number eight? No, it's six. number six. Number six for the Wildcats. Peyton Langan. Uh, I ain't got no height and size on this one. Number eight. Ah, oh, it says, well, it doesn't give us height and weight. <laughs> But you can look at him and tell he's a big man. Yeah, he is. And run the football off of right tackle. Tackled that time by number eight for Springfield. Number, number eight, Andrew McBrady. Going to be second and nine. Springfield giving up yardage up the middle. Clark for running that option. And that, that time the quarterback kept it, and he's met there by number 51. And T is getting dark up here. We can't hardly see. Yeah, it is. Joshua Lee. Going to be third down. And T, that's more than five. Yeah, it is. It's like 37. Yes, it is. It'll be third down, and we'll, we'll call it seven. Big, big, big third down here for the Jackets. They're going to run the little end around that time. And it looks like he's going to be close to his first down, depending on where they spot it. And the Jackets, uh, I don't know what Coach got. Right now, you already got young, the, the like the speed rush group in. Yeah. And see, they're saying it's fourth down and about a half a yard. And Clarksville, I think, 
wants a measurement. Right now in that last play, also you get number 41, Joshua Philippe, the junior in a defensive end. He's 5'7", 160 pounds, coach. Yeah, we didn't see a whole lot of him last week. Only on the pass, uh, you know, the obvious pass downs, they got the rush group in. Yeah. Him and uh, Lamarius Dowling, sophomore, 5'5", 180 pounds. And they're going to measure. And it's going to be awfully close. Yeah, it is close. I think they're going to be just short. And just short. Just short. I'm talking about inches. So it's fourth down and inches from about the 26-yard line. So, T, early in the game, do you go for it here? In your own territory too, Coach. They say it's one of the best Clarksville teams they've seen in years. Why not? Yeah, got that big fullback. Yes, sir. He's a house. All he's got to do is lean forward. Well, in fact, well, they don't run quarterback sneaks anymore since uh -huh. he's running out of a shotgun. But all he got to do is lean forward. Quarterback under center this time, and that's exactly what he does. He quarterback sneaks, and it looks like he's got his first down. I have no idea what the Jackets are thinking about. They got up there and, and, and moving around, standing up. It, it, they've already lined up. Get down. Yeah. Get down and get shoot under, submarine under, and just try to stuff it. Yeah, the low man always wins. And like you said, we were standing up that time. Yep. And see, they brought in a different quarterback to run it that time, number 12. So you were warning us about that. And now they've got number nine in the backfield. <laughs> yeah, he's quarterbacking. You know, keep switching it up, coach. And his bad snap and a race to the football. And the quarterback's going to get it, but there's a flag on the play. And we got illegal procedure against Clarksville until you would think that they would decline this. And I, I don't know why the, they blew it. Dad, I know it's a fun start, but... It wasn't too much. It wasn't more of a false start than the first play of the game was. Exactly. <laughs> See, that wing goes in motion. And and the, it's, it's like the tackle, whichever wing, whichever side the wing come from, that tackle, like, false starts. Yes, he does. Else is moving. He does it every time. Clarkson with the football. Going to hand to the wing, trying to get outside. Going to. Finally be brought down there by, let's see, 74. I think it's Duru that yes, got sir. the tackle. And helped along by number 51 for Springfield. So it's going to be second down at about 14 for Clarksville. Number 51 for the Jackets, Joshua Lee, our Omni Garage Door Player of the Week last week, Coach. He did an excellent job against the Bobcats last week. Second down at about 12 for the Yellow Jackets, I mean for the Wildcats, looking to throw for the first time. Wrong place to go. And tried <laughs> Cobbins and almost got it intercepted. That's the wrong place to go, Coach. Yes. You can pick on anybody else, but leave that man alone. Clarksville coach won't uh, – Interference call, no. but he's not going to get there. That's just great, 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 great coverage there by Clarence Cobbins. One of the best corners in the state of Tennessee, Coach. Why, why, why are you going that way? I, <laughs> evidently, they hadn't heard about him. And now they're moving the football back. I don't know what that was about, but they moved the football back. Third down and about 13. Larksville going to run the end around again. And he so fumbled fumble, that ball. And I think Springfield comes up with this one. It's Yellow Jackets ball. Joshua Lee with the recovery, Coach. And Springfield going to be sitting in great field position at about the 25-yard line. And somebody knocked that one loose. And uh -oh. Lee with Johnny on the spot. We got action. Yes, we do. <laughs> we got action. And we need to take advantage of this. Timeout on the field. 
I know last week we had it in positions like this and we couldn't come away with yeah, any we, points. we just couldn't capitalize off of it. You got the ball now on the 30-yard line. They've given you a gift. And this offense, at first drive, they looked all right, Coach. They looked pretty good until that fumble. And, you know, Tony, he dropped that pass to him down there. He, yeah. He's going off. He has that all night. He has that height advantage of a guy. He's more athletic than a guy. He can jump up over him all night. Plus, Tony can go up and get it. Yeah, he can. And uh, Jaden Hurst, keep feeding him, Coach. The sophomore is yes. electric. Keep feeding him. And see, does that make uh, forklift systems red zone? Forklift systems red zone. And that was just a uh, free bird bail bonds turnover. Yep. Yeah, Josh knows all about them turnovers. Yes, sir. Josh England and free bird bail bonds. He's our turnover sponsor for this year. And there you go, Josh. Get your free bird bail bonds turnover there for the Jackets. Right. He created quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Jackets back to the line of scrimmage. Got twin receivers to each side of the field. Hurst in the backfield. High snap brought down, looking to throw. Got Pettis over the middle, overshoots him. Had him wide open, running across the end zone. And see, he's, like you said, he's open if we can just get him to football. Yeah, we can. It's going to be there all night, Coach. It's, I, I like, I'm a pool player. I like to play pool. As I say, it's going to be there. Yes. That is going to be there. You keep hitting them, you know, Jaden Hurst up the middle here. I'd like to see a, you know, end around, uh, you know, to, to Cobbins. You know, loosen these edges up on them a little bit. Showing blitz. I might get what I want, Coach. <laughs> Yeah, handoff Hurst. Hurst got running room, and he's going to take it straight up the middle for a touchdown. Lightning in a bottle, baby. Southside Drugs touchdown, courtesy Hurst. And like you said, he was shot out of a gun. It's so much speed, Coach. He's lightning in a bottle. They the, shot. Sophomore, the sophomore Jaden Hurst, 5'8", uh, 157 uh, pounds, lightning in a bottle. They shot a linebacker, and he filled in right behind him. And takes it right up the gut for a touchdown. And he runs so strong, Coach. Yes, he does. Run like Tiki Barber. The ball just right there. It's just same spot the whole time. Sanguinez knocks it through to tie this game at seven. So with 3-14 in the first quarter, Clarksville seven, Springfield seven. Social Dweeb Sports as Sanguinez kicks it away and puts it down to about the one-yard line taken there by Clarksville. The man cuts to the outside. Going to be knocked out of bounds finally by number 27 for Springfield. That's Rajay Dunn. Rod Dunn on the tackle. Saved the touchdown there and knocks him out of bounds. Clarksville in good field position again at their own 45-yard line. Sanguine has shown us a strong leg and put it down to the one-yard line. I call Sanguine from here on out after last week, the Logan Leffridge protege coach. He he did that. Logan Leffridge, you know, he stood beside him. Sanguine did and, and took all the, you know, free coaching he could from him and Blake Hollinsworth and look at him, coach. He's kicking, yeah. he's kicking that ball great. He's like Leftrick's mini-me. Yeah, he's kicking that ball great. 
Clarks for first and 10 from their own 45. Going to hand to the fullback, and he just bangs away for about eight yards. And see, it's a big fullback. Yeah, he is. Coming out for a blow now. Yes, yeah, second down one. Got number four back in at quarterback, going to hand to the fullback again. Breaks through the middle, and he is off to the races and going to score a touchdown. And T, he broke a couple of tackles that time and just took it straight up the gut for a touchdown. A few tackles, Coach. That was hard to watch. Yes, it was. And I think that's the first time that young man's been in the game tonight. Number two for Clarksville. Last name is Galbraith. On his first carry, takes it for a touchdown. Clarksville ready to kick the extra point. And it's up and good. So Clarksville immediately retakes the lead. 14 to seven with 226 in the first quarter. Here with Social Dweeb Sports, where Clarksville has taken the lead 14 to 7, and they're going to squib kick the football, going to be fielded by Pettis. Pettis trying to cut it back across the field, cuts up the field, and takes it back to about the 36 yard line. And Springfield will be starting at their own 36. Got 210 left in the first quarter. And trailing 14 to 7. The Jackets offense looked good last series, Coach. Pick back up where you left off. And we got a big mismatch down here with Cobbins because I know that that man cannot cover him. And Betts pulls it down, looking to throw. Hit at the line of scrimmage. And going to be dropped right there. In fact, he's going to lose one. And T. Clarksville defensive line caving our front in. Yeah, they are. Penetration, penetration, penetration. And they're small, Coach. They're not big. No. I think the biggest man they got is the nose tackle. Yeah, number 35 right here. Shoulder pass is bigger than he is, Coach. Yeah, you, exactly. And, and on the other side, they're both about the size of a fullback. And you've got a man being sent off for surely they're kidding. They sent him off to put his shirt tail in, T. As hot as it is tonight. <laughs> Woo. Going to be second and 11. Put Cobbins in motion. There's the jet sweep you've been wanting to. Cuts it upfield. Going to pick up about three yards. Takes it up to about the 38-yard line. Until you know you don't think about it being much, three yards, but he is just a step away from breaking it. Yeah, he is. Somebody get out their lane and don't pursue the right angle, and we'll see you later. So it's going to be third down at about seven. 
You got trip set to the bottom of the screen. Betts looking to throw and under pressure and going to be sacked. Ball comes out, but I think it was blown dead. And see, he didn't have time to set up. Nope. We got to find an answer up front or it's going to be a long night. Yeah, it is. At the end of the first quarter, your score. So at the end of the first quarter, Clarks for 14, Springfield 7. Ready to receive the punt by Sanguinez. Takes a long Springfield bounce and all the way down to about the 28 yard line. So that's where Clarksville will have it to start the second quarter. Clarksville ahead 14 7. And T, things not going. Springfield's way right now. Not at all. And if you're the Jackets, I know you're a young team, but you got to battle and you got to fight, coach, because this Clarksville team's not going to pull up. Now, Springfield going to have to shore up that defensive line and the offensive line because we're just getting whipped up front. Here we are. A hand to the fullback. That time just blowed up. Woo! Duru Smith. Like you said, he got penetration, blew that play up from the start. If we can get that three times out of Duru straight, we got some, Coach. Because that would just automatically kill their dive, and that's killing their offense. Yeah, he's just causing chaos back there. Duru, big big guy. I don't yes, know what he weighs, but it, he's a big fella. Quarterback going to hand to the fullback, and he finds a lot of running room up the middle. Talking about Duru, coach. 5'8", 260 pounds. I knew he was big. That time, tackle made by number 61 for Springfield. And, T, we've called his name a lot tonight. Well, that's Anson Dickerson. And, T, there's your man again. That's 41 that time, 41. Coach. He played that perfect. I was he, just talking about that earlier, Joshua Philippe. Hit five, him in the backfield. 5'7", 160 pounds. Stay at home, coach. Do your job. <laughs> he did that. Makes up fourth down and about four. Loss of one brings up fourth and four. <laughs> and surely Clarks were not thinking about going for it. But they that's, are. that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to try to draw Springfield off sides. And not going to work. So Clarksville going to take a timeout. And see why we got a timeout. What are some things that Springfield needs to improve on right now? Hey, Coach, it's just defensively, 
do your job. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to be Superman. Don't try to do the next man's job. Do your job. If your job is to hit the dive man, hit the dive man. If your job is to stay with the pitch man, stay with the pitch man. If you got the quarterback, watch the quarterback. Don't try to do no one else's job. Be your 111th of this defense. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that we talked about at the beginning of the game. You've got to play assignment football. Yes, sir. And like we saw, if you don't hit that dive man, he's capable of taking it to, to the end zone. Yeah, he is. And offensively, for the Jackets, just stay on schedule. Don't you know we're getting bad snap. I mean, not, we had no bad snaps tonight, but we're getting the ball, and sometimes you know it's not there. And Parker may go backwards. You're getting losing yards that way. Uh, overthrows. Uh, you know we've had a fumble. Like just take care of the football and trust yourself and play ball, man. Because you're these we have athletic kids, man. They can play football. They just got to do it. And so you got a score from Nashville, seven to six, New England. It's foot. It's it's, it's a preseason coach. Yep. Hope the Titans lose always. Long high punt. Gonna be fielded by Cobbins. Took a big chance there, not fair catching that ball. That's number 82 that time, uh, Cameron Cobbins. He played with fire with that one, Coach. He sure did. Better him than me. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's one job I, I didn't did not like. To. He was looking up, trying to catch that punt, people flying all around you. Job I never wanted, Coach. I could never have anyway. Mm-mm, didn't want it. <laughs> so it's Springfield football, first and 10 from their own 36-yard line. 10-13 left in the first half. Put Hurst in motion. Going to throw the little screen out there. They had that one read perfectly. I know this is Parker's first year starting quarterback, but if it ain't there, you got to run it, Coach. If, if, exactly. if, it's, if, it, if it's an obvious it's not there, I just got to tuck it and get what I can get. And plus, he looked him down the whole time. He did. I mean, there was no doubt about where he was going with the football. Clarksville able to read that one pretty easily. Going to be second down 10 from the 36-yard line of Springfield. Going to hand to Hurst up the middle and breaking tackles. Takes it up he still and still down. going. He takes it for a Holman Jeweler first down. And Hurst did a lot of that on his own team. Yeah, he did. Jaden Hurst, give him the ball, Coach. I'm telling you, just keep feeding it to him. I, I run a little option back at him, you know, with, with Hurst and Parker Betts. Yes. I mean, he's the best thing that we've got going right now. Yep. So it's first and 10, ball sitting right at the 50-yard line. 9.41 left in the half, Springfield trailing 14-7. to seven. Got a hand to Hurst up the middle again. He once again gets positive yardage. Taking it down to about the 45 yard line. See, he's picking about four or five yards at a yes, crack. Sir. And that's when you start the world in this partial defense. You take it into consideration, they beat Montgomery Central 56 to zero last week. Montgomery Central had a lot of three and outs and his defense didn't have to stay on the field a long time. You get this defense standing on the field a long time and they're you know, testing their endurance here early and definitely with this temperature, you start to break some. I'm telling you, they got Tony Pettis out here, one-on-one coverage. Betts hands to Hurst, Hurst breaks the tackle, takes it back to the line of scrimmage, Hurst. nothing there. Hurst. May have gained a yard, yard That's and a half. Going to be third down and about five. And I'm like you, Coach. Pettis, was, he was one-on-one out here. Safety was <laughs> – he was basically another outside linebacker. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, one move and he's gone. The safety's having to move over on the other side of the field where the trip set is. High snap. Handoff, and we got a flag coming in where you think it's going to be a holding call. With flags on the play. And that's going to stall this drive. Yes, it is. Holding Hurt. Springfield. Springfield. Looks like we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot here. Uh, I 
about time we get something going good, we have a Let's mental error. Ball. Yes, sir. We'll bring up third and 15 for the Yellow Jackets. Long 15 yards to go to get a first down for the Yellow Jackets. And T, I'm like you, there's nobody in the middle of the field. The safety right now is number 15. Yeah. If you're looking at the screen, he's right there by the Social Duty Sports logo. That's the safety. And uh, he's now he's showing a little respect to Tony, but early he wasn't. Tony could blow by either one of them anytime he gets ready. Looking to throw under pressure, throws the screen. Hurst going to be dropped for a loss. Clarksville had that one read perfectly. Oh, that's not Hurst. That's 84. That's Dowling. Dowling. So it's going to be fourth down and 16. Sanganez on to kick it away. High snap brought down short, Shank. short kick. Going to back it. up. He didn't kick it to the first down. No, he didn't. Isn't that Cobbins that caught it before it could go any further back? It's Cameron Cobbins. But he was under a lot of pressure, and I don't think that ball went 10 yards. And the snap was high, Coach. Yes, it was. He had to jump to get it, and when he landed, they were coming. And he is not very tall to start with. So Clarksville with great field position here. Seven minutes, 10 seconds left and a half. Already ahead, 14-7. i tell you that one penalty killed that drive. Timeout. Yeah, it did. And we got a timeout on the field at Springfield, so we'll step away and be right back. Back here with Social Dweeb Sports where Clarksville has the football first and 10. Got a hand to the fullback, and he takes it down to about the 40. Uh, we'll say about the 46-yard line. Going to be second down and about a long two. And tell you, as long as they're picking up yardage like that, they're going to keep handing it to him. Yeah, but you stay on schedule. When McCloster stays on schedule with that type of offense, you're in trouble. Clarksville going to hand it to the wing coming around. Tackle that time by number 82. Great play there by Cameron Cobbins on that tackle. And he's still able to pick up his first down. Ball going to be down to the 42-yard line of Springfield. Number nine in it, quarterback for the Clarksville Wildcat. Hands it to the fullback. Going to be hit there. I think 84 was the first person to get there, along with number 51. And that uh, we've called his name all night, too. That's Lee. Lee. He's picking up about two yards on the play. Going to be second down eight from the 40-yard line of Springfield. Hand to the fullback again. Moving ahead. Joshua Lee again on the tackle, Coach. 
And he's going to make it a short third and about one. See, we're giving up way, way too much to that dive, man. Look at them linemen up front, because they're, they're gas. Yes, they are. And that's the problem about Jackets defense. We won't have much, uh, you know, we won't have many, much depth yep. overall, but definitely not on D-line. And they're going to hand it to him again. That time hit straight away by number 84. Lamarius Dowling, great play there by the sophomore. And it's going to be third down. Oh, it's going to be fourth down. Well, they say he got enough for a first down. I see that's. I'd have to see that again. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't get any yardage at all. But they saying it's first down, first and ten on the forty-one yard line of Springfield, or thirty-one yard line. Gonna hand it to the fullback again. I keep seeing a little movement. Coach, yes. The snap. They they've been doing it the whole game. <laughs> yeah. They've been called one time. But it's almost every play. When they put that man in motion, it looks like there's a lot of people moving around. Yep. Going to be second down at about seven. Going to hand it to the wing, coming around. Going to be tackled there by number five for the Yellow Jackets. Jeremiah Beard. And that's going to be another Clarks for first down. Going to be first and ten from about the 18-yard line of Springfield. Clarksville just methodically moving the ball down the field, primarily giving it to the fullback. And that time going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage, but we got a flag coming in from the back. Hopefully it's a hold on Clarksville. And that's what it is. So it's going to set them back. Going to move them all the way back to about the 27 yard line. First and 20, and that's exactly what you want if you're the Jackets. Exactly. Get them off schedule. And see, the, that, a ball, fumble, that ball's on the ground. That ball's still rolling around. I think that's Springfield football, Coach. It looks like it recovered, recovered by it number is. 67. <laughs> 67 for Springfield coming up with the football. It's Allen Dickinson, the senior coach. The Jackets, the Jackets get just every time. And they go another free bird bell bond turnover, coach. We'll take them all night. After the recovery, it'll be first and 10 to the Yellow Jackets and at their own quickness. Yellow Jackets with three minutes, 11 seconds to work with here in the half. <laughs> what a dodge the bullet, coach. Yes. What a play by the defense. Yellow Jackets with a receiver to each side of the field. Hands to Hurst. Hurst cutting it outside. Cuts it to the sideline. And see if he doesn't run into his own man. (laughs) He has a touchdown. He's got a touchdown. Picks up a big, big Holman Jewelers first down. He had it, Coach. He sure did. One of his linemen turned around to see where he was, and he ran into him. He didn't know who to go outside of the man or inside of the man. I would have faked the head. Thing out and go right inside of him. Yes, he'd have been to hit his head on the goalpost, coach. Nobody was going to catch him. Two fifty-two left in the half. First Springfield first on the move. Over yard line. Going to hand to Hurst again, and picks up about three Hurst yards. On the Shot for the catch, led by number fifteen, Ken. It's going to be second down at about seven, 229 and three counting. We'll bring up second and seven. Taking a long time to get this play in, T. Going to 
I think they're also thinking about that clock of not giving Clarks with that ball back. Coach. Yeah. Because they get it coming out of half. High snap, pulled down, handed to Hurst. Nothing there. Hurst stops in the backfield. Going to be 150 left in the half. Springfield down seven. Third down and about, well, we'll say a long seven. T, sooner or later, I would have to go back to Pettis or Cobbins one because they got single coverage with no help to be found. None at all. It's safe. He got one high safety now. He's in the middle of the field. Springfield in no hurry. High snap, hand to Hurst. That's Dowling. That's Dowling taking it up the middle. Toting that tater, boy. Another Holman Jewelers first down. Stop by Staley and Smith. First and 10 Springfield at the Wildcat 39-yard line. T, I can't get used to them starting the clock as soon as they spot the ball <laughs> on the first down. But 56 seconds left, looking downfield now, and almost intercepted by number eight. Threw it right into his hands. Brings up second down. T, if he caught that, there's nothing between him and the goal line no, but ain't. green grass. And an incompletion uh, stops the clock for the Jackets. 50.7 seconds left and then half. Jackets down 14-7. Second down, 10. Got trip receivers Aww. to the far side. Look at that safety, Coach. He's up here again. Yes, he is. Going to hand to Dallin. Dallin hitting the backfield and dropped. 45 seconds on the clock and moving. Jackets only got one timeout left, Coach. It's 39 seconds left. If they're going to get this playoff, they better hurry. And ten for the Yellow Jackets. Counting down, 26. High snap, hand to Hurst, hit in the backfield and drop. The Jackets are contending, taking it to halftime, Coach. Yeah. They're just going to leave it there. Clock counting down, and that's the end of the first half with the Clarksville Wildcats leading 14-7 over Springfield.
few scores for you at halftime. All these in second quarter at halftime. Westmoreland, seven. Clay County, zero. Smith County, seven. DeKalb County, zero. Trialsdale County, zero. Macon County, 14. White County, eight. Warren County, six. Clarksville Northwest, Wilson Central, no score. In the second quarter, Portland, 14. Greenbrier, zero. Halftime, Lawrence County, 14. Loretta, seven. Second quarter, Mount Pleasant, eight. Spring Hill, seven. Second quarter, Gallatin 23, Station Camp 13. Second quarter, Wayne County 20, Summertown 14. First quarter, Waverly 14, Waverly 20, Fairview 14. Halftime, White House 20, Liberty Creek 0. Halftime, Brewer Academy 11, Brentwood 7. Halftime, Hillsboro 28, John Overton 7. Halftime, White House Heritage 21. East Hickman, seven.
few score updates for you. Second quarter, Joe Burns, 13. Ballard Memorial out of Kentucky, 7. Knoxville Catholic, 19. Brevard out of North Carolina, 6. Final, Central Grove in Indiana, 28. Oakland, 10. First quarter, Germantown, 7. Desado Central out of Mississippi, 0. Third quarter, Horn Lake out of Mississippi, 0. South Wind, 34. Rossview versus Logan County. We have no score. Uh, final. West Ridge, 26. Daniel Boone, 18. Third quarter, Greenville, 14. Dobson Bennett, 14. Fourth quarter, Elizabethan, 20. Morrison West, Morristown West, 7. Fourth quarter, Bearden, 13. Alcoa, 10. I'm going to try to get to a few local scores here. In the second quarter, Westmoreland, 7. Clay County, 0. Second quarter, Smith County, 7. DeKalb County, 0. First quarter, White Creek, 12. Livingston Academy, 24. Second quarter, Trialsdale County, 0. Macon County, 21. Second quarter, White County, 8. Warren County, 6. Second quarter, Portland 14, Greenbrier 6. Second quarter, Gallatin 23, Station Camp 20. Halftime, White House 20, Liberty Creek 0. Halftime, Brentwood Academy 11, Brentwood 7. Third quarter, Hillsborough 35, John Overton 7. And that's all, oh, here we go, halftime, Clarkson Northeast 0. Hendersonville, 36. Halftime, Riverdale, 7. Henry County, 7. And, of course, the Henry, the Henry County uh, Big Red Patriots, uh, they'll be waiting for Springfield next week as the Springfield Yellow Jackets travel to Paris, Tennessee. We've got to make that long trip. They always treat us nice, but it's hard getting there. Yeah, it is. T, what kind of things do you think need to be worked on here in the start of the second half. We gotta be able to stretch the field, coach. You're nothing if you can't stretch the field. You said that at halftime to me, you know, you gotta be able to stretch the field. If you can't if you can't stretch the field then you, you know you come you kinda become one dimensional to the in the defensive eyes and they just gonna try to stuff their run, stack the box and that's what they've done. Cause we've seen a few times, like you said, that trips look one way and when Cobbins comes in motion, that safety, the backside safety away from the trips, he comes down and Tony Pettis is one on one. And I like to see him take a shot there and and, you know, Jaden Hurst, of course, still running down here. Keep giving him the ball. Yeah, like you was talking about, you know, you get them one-on-one, it's a 50-50 chance that you're going to catch that football. Yes, sir. And we've seen already that Pettis, man, he's beat him twice deep. One time he dropped it and one time he was overthrown. Uh, and, and both times what happened was it stretched the defense. And we got to improve the blocking up front. Yes, sir. Uh, Clarkson, you, you got to stop them because they can't. They, sh they shouldn't be getting as much pressure as they are up front. Sanganez gonna kick it away. Gonna be dropped about the five yard line, picked up, and he's gonna bring it out. He fumbled that ball at the end. Let's see what they got. I think Clarkson recovered it. Yeah, Clarkson's got the football at about the 21, 22 yard line. If you're the Dragons to start this second half, you want to play some of the best defense you've played to date right now. You can't let them go up two scores. And Clarksville continues to interchange their quarterbacks. They're going to hand to the fullback again. And see, he has done a lot of damage tonight. He is. He's running hard, too, Coach. That time, I think he was. Finally brought down Max Baldwin and 67 for Springfield. Number 67 for the Jackets. Senior, Allen Dickerson. Going to be second down at about six. Quarterback going to hand to the man coming around. A lot of room, breaks into the open. We got a flag back down field where you would think it would be a hole. We'll just have to wait and see. Heck of a run. Long run. 
Got a flag back at about the 34-yard line holding. Sure is, it's bringing it back. Going to bring it back, put them behind the chains. And that negates a huge run by Clarksville. Number seven for Clarksville, James. Well, I can't do that last name, Coach. <laughs> if you can't, I don't imagine I can either. Here you go. Here you go to uh, pronunciate. Pronun- Dow Rimple. Dow Rimple. Sure is. Yeah, Dow Rimple. James Dow Rimple on that carry there for Clarksville. I would imagine Dow Rimple tired right now. I like how they had a pronunciations uh, area right here on their roster. Yeah. They have a few last names. Unvari. Marseille, Marseille Vion. I don't know. It's a lot. They got a whole list of them. I just hope I don't have to call them. Go that dive again. Pull back. Bring it out past the 30 the yard play. line. We got another penalty dive flag. Let's see what this is. T, could it possibly be a late hit? Referees talking it over. And got face masked. And the Jackets gave it back to him. Yeah. Gonna be first and 10. Wildcats on the penalty. Gonna bring it all the way out to the 48 yard line of Clarksville. Clarksville on the little misdirection, and he breaks it into the secondary track. Finally brought down by number 16 for Springfield. 16, Jackson Holt makes the touchdown saving tackle. And it's opened up like the Red Sea, Coach. Yes, it did. Parted right. Up. And I'm still saying 70 is jumping off sides. It's a false starting every time. He right has now. to be. And we got timeout Clarksville. And see, there's an awful lot of movement going on yeah, it is. by Clarksville. And they're not getting it, but it's a whole lot of it. But they've been doing it the whole game, and I think they've called it once. And as always, we'd like to thank our great sponsors for this season. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Southside Drugs, Freebird Bail Bonds. Omni Garage Door, Forklift Systems, Holman Jewelers, Baldwin's Barbecue, Sunshine Cleaning Company, Crowder Funeral Home, Allen Holman with Century 21, Jody Reynolds with Legacy Signature, Rawls Paving, Wilkins Building Group, Vision Concepts, Westside Wheels and Tires, Jeff Wright with Remax, Dunbar Lawn Care, Bulldog Renovations, and BS Brew Works. And as I said earlier, you can catch every Friday night BS Brew Works airs the game uh, live, our, our broadcast in, in their brewery, in their tap house, and it's a great environment. And we'd like to say hello to all the people at BS Brew Works again. And like I said earlier, Coach Baldwin's Barbecue, they have a Tuesday special now to go along with their Wednesday special. Tuesday, this for the rest of the year, they have Tuesday special. This month, the special is the chicken, and uh, I think it's eight ninety nine for a meal, for dinner. Can't beat that. Clarksville with the football, going to go on the little misdirection play. Number eight on the carry, still running. Takes it down inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. And see, they're just gashing Springfield up front now. Gashing them, Coach. Getting what they want. And they're not even they're not even blocking hard. They're just running through, getting what they want, Coach. Yeah, I mean, he's going 10 yards before he's ever touched. The guard pulled and didn't even touch nobody. There was nobody there to touch. Larchville going to run the same play the other side of the field. This time going to be brought down there by Cobbins, and I didn't catch the other number, T. But it's going to be second down and five from the 14-yard line. This Jackets defense got a bow up right here, Coach. Will be awfully hard to come back from a two score deficit. And I think they may have finally called false start. False start against Clarkville High. 
It's there every time, Coach. Yes, it is. And that time, they, they kind of showed their hand. That was a pass back that way, Coach. Yeah. And it was open. <laughs> <laughs> Wide open. But we're just lucky the referee finally saw it our way and called it illegal procedure. 9-24 in the third quarter. Springfield trailing 14-7. They're going to throw the little bubble screen. Played beautifully out there by number six for Springfield. Number six being Timothy Bush. There to break it up. And T, that was a lateral. So and it was, gonna a live, it was a live ball. And the Springfield safety, he didn't, he act like he didn't know. He didn't know, Coach. He, that's what, in practice, you practice don't matter what. The ball touches the ground. We're scooping. We're scoring. That's everything. right. Don't take a chance. Make the refs decide it. <laughs> if it's exactly. A complete or a fumble. Third down and 20. Going to hand it to the man coming around. Going to break it free. And he is going to walk in for a touchdown. Totally untouched. Yep. And T, how many times have they run that play tonight? All night, baby. I'm talking about this man was untouched on the way to the end zone. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Coach. That's right. Making the score 20 to 7, 8.55 in the third quarter. Clark Fallon to tack on the extra point. Snap down, kick is up, and it is good. So with 8.55 in the third quarter, Clarksville ahead 21 to 7. here where Clarksville squib kicks it again fielded by Pettis and Pettis dropped immediately Clarksville just swarming all over the field team and they're playing with way way more energy now coach the Jackets don't figure it out here they're in trouble yeah now it's either do or die now Tell you, we seeing new faces in up here on the on the line. Yeah, you get number 63 in for the Jackets of left guard. That'll be sophomore Cooper Ross. Springfield in the shotgun, put Cobbins in motion. And Betts running the read option, and he is stuffed. Gonna lose a yard. T right now, nothing's working. Nothing at all, Coach. Clarksville well, PA's been acting up all night. Yeah. We're right underneath the speaker, and we still <laughs> can't understand it. Keep going in and out. And T Clarksville got 10 men within 10 yards of the football. Yep. One safety high. Yeah. And we got a timeout, Springfield. Their first timeout for the second half. T, you're right. If we're going to do anything, we better do it now. It's now or never because they get the clock. We get the ball back again, coach, and we don't score. That's going to milk that clock. Yeah. That drive right there was methodical. 
and they took their time with it, and they capitalized their touchdown then. And just defensively for the Jackets, you had them behind the chains and, you know, in, in, in a good position. And, and that, that, there's just a little passive right there on that uh, on the end of the round. And number seven, he, he ran hard and he was held in the goal post. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Right now, uh, Clarksville just dominating both sides yes, they of, are. of the line of scrimmage. That's where it starts for the, you know, and, and definitely going into this region we're finna go into, Coach. It's gonna, you're gonna live and die with your line play. And even next week heading up to Paris, Tennessee, we know what they're gonna do, Coach. They're gonna line up in that oh, eye yeah. formation, and they're gonna try to run it down our throat. And for us up front, we got to look in the mirror, you know, gut check, we got to come and play ball right now. To yeah, carry that over for the rest of the season. Henry County's always got a huge, huge offensive line. Yes, sir. Springfield football, second down and 11. Put Hurst in motion, looking to throw. Nobody there. Tucks it, trying to run to get to the outside. Going to be dropped after a gain of about four yards. Good coverage that time by the Clarksville secondary. Nowhere to go with the football. Nowhere at all. And then he go again as the Jackets. You're in the third down situation. We got to try to throw the ball and get the first down. Got Hurst in the backfield. And he's just he was gonna, unblocked, Coach. He's just going to tuck it and run it. Number six, like you said, was unblocked. And came in, make the tackle for a loss on the play. Going to bring up fourth down and six. And Springfield bringing on the kicking team again. Clarksville going to get the football in excellent field position once again. Need a great snap. Blocking in a punt here, Coach. And got a dangerous man back to return the kick. Short, wobbly kick. Going to bounce backwards. And they're going to lose about 10 yards on the bounce. So, Clarksville will be taking the football over inside Springfield territory at the 44-yard line. And they're set up again, Z. Plus territory already, Coach. They're on the Springfield side of the ball. The offense hasn't touched the field yet. The Jackets got the bow up here, Coach. This is gut check time. Springfield has twin receivers to the bottom of the screen. Got a hand to the fullback, and he's just plowing over people. Going to pick up his first down. See if you noticed how he lines up when he's going to carry the ball. He has foot right behind it like he's yeah. in a, a ready-to-run stance. <laughs> I mean, he's telling everybody in the, in the stadium who's going to run the football. Yeah. But so far, he's been very successful at it. Got a hand to the wing coming around again. He's going to pick up about four Stop yards on the here. play. Number 57 on the tackles there for the Jackets. Be James Peagle. So it's going to be second down and about seven for the Wildcats. And T, they're going to run in a new quarterback. I don't know if they have that scripted or they just play it by ear. But I think they just play that thing by ear, Coach. Just running in, people. And the fullback, once again, going to pick up about three or four yards. He's been a workhorse tonight. Yeah, he has. Number two for, for Clarksville. His last name is Galbraith. T. You'll have to tell me his first name. He's on a pronunciation too, Coach. Alamore? Amari. Amari. It's not spelled Amari, though. No, it's not. But on the pronunciation, it says Amari. And here he is. You can see he's lined up with his foot back again. He's the lead blocker. And this time, Springfield's defense able to get in the backfield. I think the first man there was number 41. 41 for Springfield, Joshua Philippe. And here you go again via the Jackets. You got them in a fourth down situation. And they're not, you know, they're not hesitating to go for it. No. You got to stop here. Fourth down and six at the 29-yard line. I mean, you ain't got anything to lose. No, sir.
They're going to run the same little counter play, and he's going to be awfully close, and I think he's got his first down. He was thrown to the first down. Yes, he was. Springfield man slung him about two yards. He's short. Springfield's running the offense on. Yeah. They're going to measure that, though. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're just going to give it to Springfield. I would think they would want to measure it. Uh, yeah. It's my offense sitting there ready to go. I could have sworn that he had a first down. but And that's turnover on downs. We'll take that too as a yeah, free bird bills bonds turnover. Exactly. Springfield got to make something happen on offense and, here. And Clarksville hasn't played the cleanest football at all. No. Not at all. They've turned the ball over, not converted a couple times on fourth down. And the Jackets just can't capitalize off of it. 444 in the third quarter. And penalty flag comes in. Delay a game on Springfield. And see, that's awful hard to do. Get a delay a game when it's a turnover on down. Yeah, the clock started. Yeah. When, when, when Springfield's on the field, they automatically start to get the clock. If anything, Springfield could have snapped the ball with no defense out there. Well, yeah. 444 in the third quarter, Springfield being penalized. Delay a game, going to be first down and 15 from the about, the, we'll say, 18-yard line. And well, we got a timeout. Springfield using a timeout, so we'll step away and be right back. We're back here with Social Dweeb Sports where it's first and 15 from the own 19 yard line. Gonna hand to Hurst and he is smothered. Met in the backfield by three or four purple jerseys. And gonna lose about a yard. No brings up second and 15. It's gonna be second down at about 16. And look at this, Coach, putting Clarence Cobb as the quarterback. That's a different look. <laughs> He's just going to take and run it. <laughs> and picks up about, what, four or five yards up the middle. I'll I, I stick with it, Coach. <laughs> yeah. Something different. Throw him a change up. You're not getting much in the air anyway. You've been getting everything on the ground tonight. Why not put the ball in your best player's hand? Exactly. <laughs> Cobbins got trip receivers to the near side, single receiver to the far side. And 
and going to take it, looking to, and he's going to be hit in the backfield. I like it, coaches. He got options there. Yeah. He was telling people, go, I'm going to throw the ball. Nobody was, everybody was looking at him. Yeah. But, T, we're, we're not getting very much of a push up front at all. We're losing up front right now. Yeah. And that's surprising to say looking at Clarksville defense line, Coach, because the yeah. biggest defense lineman may be Sang 200 it pounds. Kicks it away. Clark Good is just going to get away from it. Sangonez has got his foot in that one that time, Coach. So it's going to go over to Clarksville. 246 in the third quarter. Springfield down 21-7. See, Springfield rotating people in and out up front. Have to be partially because of the heat. Clarksville ready to take the snap. Going to hand to the fullback again. He just turned it away. Picks up about six, seven yards. Duro Smith is on his back, coach. <laughs> he got pancaked. Duro rode that guy like he was a horse. <laughs> I like Duro being lateral playing down the line. Duro's playing good up front tonight, coach. Just got to come along with him. Somebody got to step up and help him. Quarterback puts a man in motion, hands to the fullback. Fullback breaks free. Got one man to beat. Running down the sideline, going to be tracked down by number 17. Knocked out of bounds. Tony Pettis, only man fast enough to catch him. And Clarksville sitting pretty again. Clarksville right back up, ready to snap the football. Hand to the fullback. Yeah. Timeout, Springfield. We got it off for before the snap. And, T, that's, that's the last timeout for Springfield. Timeout the and Coach Wilson is adamant. He's telling him to fight, Coach. You yeah. can see it. He's telling him, like, fight. Come on. You can't just lay down. You got to fight. This is not like a Springfield team coached by Coach Wilson at all. Because if you don't fight, I promise you, Clausen has no problem with embarrassing you here tonight <laughs> during that Hall of Fame and Dusty <laughs> ceremony <laughs> and the 100th meeting of Springfield versus Clarkson. This crowd is packed out. People in the end zones, they have no problem with embarrassing you tonight. You got to step up and play football. You got to finish this football game. And I like the look on offense with uh, Cobbins at quarterback. Yeah, it sort of gave you a change of pace. Yeah, I, I, the only thing I would say is roll him to his right. It's throwing yeah. on But other than that, it, I liked it. Yeah, he is very capable. Uh, moving the football himself. And he gives gives Springfield offense a new dimension. Halftime. Livingston Academy, 24. Whites Creek, 12. Macon County, 21. Trousdale County, 0. Portland, 21. Gallatin, I mean, Greenbrier, 6. Halftime. Gallatin, 29. Station Camp, 20. Fairview, 21. Waverly, 20. Liberty Creek, Liberty Creek 6, White House 20. Clarks for hands to the fullback, and he's taking it down inside the five-yard line. Got a penalty flag thrown in the area where it should be a hold. Flag on the play. I think they're going to bring this one back. Going to be holding Clarksville. Clark He's going to move it back. He's going to move the football back to the 26-yard line where it's going to be first down and about 20. Going to hand to the fullback. He brings it back to the 20-yard line. 
And see, that quarterback is leaning. Yeah, he's the one leaning, too. Every time he's leaning toward the line of scrimmage, and they're not called. Right before the snap. Brings up second and 14. So it's going to be second down and 14 now. Ball at about the 20-yard line. Clarksville hands to the fullback again, and he powers his way down to about the 11-yard line. See, I'd like to know how many carries he's had tonight. Yes. He's bobbling that ball when he does get it, though, Coach. Yes, he is. One good lick, and it's going to come out. Like we said, Clarksville hasn't played a clean game tonight by any standards, but they're now wearing down on this Springfield D-line. Third down, Clarksville hands to the fullback again, keeping his balance and drags Springfield defenders into the end zone. That time had two and three Springfield defenders hanging on and still takes it into the end zone, making a score 27-7. Clarksville with the extra point coming up. And see, he's getting stronger as the game goes on. Yeah, he is. Kicker on for Clarksville to add the extra point. Snap down, kicks up, and he is perfect. Making the score 28 7. And we'll be right back in just a second. here with Social Dweeb Sports where Clarksville has opened up a 28-7 lead over Springfield and ready to kick it away and they're going to pooch kick it again Tony Pettis is going to receive it cuts up the middle, going to be hit and fumbles and Clarksville has the football at about the 32 yard line of Springfield it looks like when it rains it pours I see a few Springfield faithful heading for the exit, Coach. Yeah. It ain't even the fourth quarter yet. Yeah, they're getting out of here. Been a long time since you've seen that at a Springfield game. Yes, sir. Jack is going to have to fight right here, Coach. You're going to have to. It's a young team. We knew it would be growing pains as the season go on. Right now is one of them growing pains. You're down 28-7. You ain't even hit the fourth quarter yet. And, and Clarkson has all the momentum. Got 47 seconds left in the third quarter. Clarksville in the red zone, knocking at the door. And we got a, another delay of game. And T, is it me or are they calling delay of game awfully quick? Awfully quick. We've seen it last week and we're seeing it again this week. And right now for the Springfield Yellow Jackets coach, you have one senior, two seniors on the field and a whole bunch of sophomores. They're going to have to grow up in a hurry. Counting like five, I'm counting five sophomores out there right now. Clarksville going to just continue to hand to the fullback, and he continues to break tackles. Going to be tackled there by Cobbins, but not before he picks up a huge chunk of yardage. All the way down to about the 16-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Clarksville. 36 seconds left and counting. They get up to the line in a hurry. Got to hand it to him again, 
And that time he's going to be met in the backfield by number 44 for Springfield. And that's John Miltier. Great play there by Miltier coming from the linebacker spot. She didn't make it that play. Going to lose about a half a yard on the play. And I think that'll be it for the third, Coach. We'll go to the fourth. Going to see if they stand up here in the fourth, if the character comes through. Yes, sir. This is definitely character building time. And we'll be right back. At the end of the third quarter, your score, Clark High School 28, 7. Back here with Social Dweeb Sports to start the first fourth quarter. And Miltier in on the tackle for a we'll short the gain. And see, they're just continuing to feed that fullback. Just giving it to him, coach, and letting him fall there? forward, get what he can out of it. He's, he, was, he's goes, <laughs> he was gassing us there in the end of that third quarter, so yeah. I don't blame him for giving him the ball. But right now for the Springfield defense, you got to bow up. It's, this is learning time right now, Coach. Got to take something away from this game that's positive. And this offense was built mm -hmm. to eat up the clock. Going to hand on the end around, and he's going to get down to about the one-yard line. And, T, I think he just tripped over something. He did. Because he was headed to the end zone. So it's going to be first and goal for the Wildcats. And T, how many turnovers is that for Springfield tonight? I can't count, Coach. I, I didn't. I didn't want to count. As soon as we had to open and kick off fumble, I, I can count three. Yeah. It hasn't been a clean game either way. No. For Clarksville or Springfield, but I mean Clarksville hadn't done anything spectacular. They, they, just, they just went and. Carried out their game plan. Yep. And that game plan was just running it down Springfield's throat. You know, yeah. up front, coming off and, and trusting the offensive line to beat Springfield's Turn defensive out. line. And, and now Clarks was going to take a timeout. So we'll take a short break and be right back. Here where it's first and goal, Clarksville. 
Going to hand it on the wing back around, and he bulls his way into the end zone. See, we're just getting knocked off the football. Just push back, Coach. Yeah. Making the score 34 to 7, 10 36 in the ball game. And Clark's alone to try to tack on another point. Clark's alone to attempt the extra point. That's from Young, Hayes, from Campbell. Here's the snap, kicks up, kick is good. So here at the beginning of the fourth quarter, 10-36 left, 35-7 in favor of the Wildcats. We're back here at Clarksville Stadium where the score is 35 to seven in favor of the Wildcats. Wildcats scoring on a one yard plunge, ready to kick it away. Gonna pooch kick it again. This time I think it's going out of bounds. So looks like the Jackets will take it over at the 35 yard line. And I see Parker Best running back onto the field coach. I think they go back to their original offense. Yeah. T, how long before you start seeing some younger faces coming in, getting a little experience in? Yeah, that's a great question, Coach. And you know, I don't know the answer to that, but you, you, you would think you would see something soon. Yeah, I mean, trailing 35-7 to 7 with 10 minutes left. Not much chance of a comeback. It'll be first and 10 Yellow Jackets from the 35-yard line. Betts takes the snap. Hands to Hurst. Hurst pulled down from behind for a gain of maybe one. He was about a half a step away from a, a sizable gain there. It's been like that a few times for Hurst tonight, Coach. Yeah. He's just getting pulled down from behind. Going to be second down and nine. Got a hand to Hurst again. And T, they just got the box stacked. They're just begging him to run the football. Yep. And as you know, the Jackets lost four of their five starting offensive linemen last year. And tonight it showed, Coach. Yes. Anytime you lose that many people up front, it takes a while to build that continuity you need up front. And this year you have three seniors up front, but not a lot of playing time with them offensively last season. But it's going to be a growing year for these Jackets. Just going to keep at it, though. Betts looking to throw. Over shoots his receiver in the flats. Ball intended for number 16, Jackson Holt. And see, that time Pettis was wanting running free over the middle. He was. And he just didn't have time to get it to him. Another three and out for the Jackets. Sanganez on to kick again. High spiral. Going to be let go and it's going to take a Springfield roll. And see, I believe if they'd have left it alone, it would have rolled a little bit yeah. further. But it's going to be Wildcat football. Let's see where they put it down. At about the 27 yard line. 9 14 left in the game. We'll 
And the Jackets band sounding real good, Coach. Yeah. That's, 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 they sound very good. Yeah, they didn't march at halftime. I don't think they would no. allow it. But. And last week we missed them trying to fix the technical, technical difficulties, but when we return home, every uh, Yellow Jacket halftime will be shown by the band. And we got, was it a fumble on the play? I just miscommunication just at the mess point there. It's a busted play. And Clarksville going to lose yardage. And now you see Clarksville running in a lot of young guys, Coach. Yeah, they're running in a bunch of clean uniforms. And a lot of respect between Coach Shelby and Coach Wilson. So, you know you wouldn't see it get too out of hand here tonight, but Clarksville definitely got their point across. Yes, they did. Got to have a flag come in from the far side and see they're finally beginning to call that motion. Flag prior to the snap. Full start against Clarkville High. We've been seeing it the whole game and it just takes them three quarters to figure it out. So it's gonna be second down and about 17 yards to go for a first for the Wildcats. Gonna hand it to number seven, cuts it upfield, gonna be met there by number 44, Miltier. It's gonna be third down at about 12. Clarks for bringing in a bunch of new players. So he got a different quarterback now than we've seen, number three in the quarterback. Gonna hand it on the counter play. Gonna bust it out over the 35 yard line to the 36. And that's gonna bring up a fourth down and short. Let's see what Clarkville's going to do here. They're running a lot of people on. Timeout for measurement. I'm going to measure here. See, I didn't think it was that close. I didn't either, Coach. I think that was an awfully generous spot. We'll hold it here and see what they've got. And it's going to be a Clarksville first down. 7.25 left in the game. Clarksville ahead 35-7. T, you got any results coming in from Henry County? I got a score... uh... Still 13-7 with Joe Burns. Portland has opened up the floodgates. Portland 35, Greenbrier 6. Portland a much improved football team. Clarksville going to lose yardage on a high snap. Going to lose about two or three yards. Third quarter, Gallatin 35, Station Camp 20. Fourth quarter, White House 20, Liberty Creek 18. Third quarter, East Hickman 13, White House Heritage 27. White House Heritage itching towards 2 0. Halftime, Hendersonville 36, Carlsville Northeast 0. Carlsville running the ball up in the middle, going to be stopped there for no gain. In the fourth quarter, Riverdale 13. Henry County 13. Riverdale supposed to be a top three team in 6-8 this season, Coach. So what does that tell you about Henry County? Yes, sir. But I already knew what that was because Riverdale, as good as they are, it's hard to go travel to Paris and win a football oh, game. Oh, yes. Marshall going to run it straight ahead. Going to be tackled there by number 41 for Springfield. 
and a host of other Yellow Jackets. Joshua Philippe. Going to be fourth down and about six. And you see this, Coach, just that stop. Everybody on the sideline clapping, all the coaches clapping. Everybody holding the fist up, fourth down. This is learning time. This is what you yeah. get. You still got to play football. And we still going to watch this tape, and you still going to have play. These plays will still be watched and analyzed by these coaches. They want to see you playing hard, and right now is the time to play hard. You got to take it just one play at a time Yes, now. sir. And they're going to let the clock run down as far as it can before they punt the football. 5-17 and counting. And the play clock hits zero. And we got a timeout to bring the punting team out. Well, they're just going to take the penalty. So that'll back them up and they'll punt the football. We got Cobbins and T, who's number five? Number five for the Yellow Jackets is sophomore Jeremiah Beard. They're back to return the punt. End over end punt, gonna be fielded by Cobbins. Cobbins trying to get to the sideline and driven out of bounds at about the 44-yard line where Springfield will take it over first and 10. Escorted out of bounds by Moore. And T, are we seeing a new quarterback in the game now? We are seeing a new quarterback for the Jackets. For the Jackets at quarterback, number one, the junior, Austin Tucker. Got quite a few new faces out there. After the moment, they're first and 10 for Springfield at their own 45 yard line. So some of the younger guys getting a taste of game action. Five minutes left in the game. High snap, handoff to the running back. The running and back, it was number 12 for the Jackets. The freshman, the Cameron Wilson. T. Clarksville making wholesale substitutions now. Four minutes and 38 seconds left in this game. And the inaugural battle for the bridge and the hundredth meeting of Clarksville Springfield will go to Clarksville, Coach. Yes. And T, that trophy that you designed is beautiful. Thank you, Coach. Uh, I got to thank Thad Doris for executing the the design and helping me with the design and that trophy is nice. I will say yes, I'm excited to see anybody get it, but of course you want to see the jackets get it, but jackets hand off and going to be dropped for about a five yard Perfect. loss there. The uh, Wildcats still right. shuffling right. people in and out on every play. And you got a chance to hold that trophy coach. That thing, <laughs> that's more than a notion. I'm telling you. <laughs> I wouldn't want to take it very far. I know when you when you hold it, you should be smiling. Yeah. You have no choice but to smile when you hold that trophy. That's right. And tonight, Coach Shelby will be smiling. And I'm excited to hope that trophy goes another 100 years with this longtime rivalry. And whoever gets that, every coach who holds that trophy is going to smile, Coach. And it's a unique trophy. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Springfield got the ball third and 12. And going to be a fumble on the play. Quarterback, I think, got back on the football. Fumble on the play, recovered by Clarksville High. And it's covered by Clarksville. So with three minutes left and change, going to be Clarksville football at about the 39-yard line of Springfield. And T, that may be, I think that's a fourth turnover of the night for the Yellow Jackets. We started this game with a turnover, Coach. Yes, we did. And you cannot win football games with turnover. We've seen how, how you know, last year we had a, such a great team and we were playing such great teams that when you have turnovers, we've seen that the slightest mistakes can get you beat. So even with a team like we had this year that's growing and learning all season, 
numerous turnovers is going to plague you and get you beat. Yeah, I'd hate to see our giveaway takeaway ratio right now. Hand off to the fullback. He's just moving the pile downfield. Going to pick up about five. For Gray Galvin on the carry. Two of interest in local area. A final from Nashville. Hendersonville 54. Northeast 0. Whoo! Hendersonville beating up on Northeast. 54 and that's one, to nothing. And that's one of our uh, region opponents. Yeah. <laughs> And see, they must teach every line, by, I mean, every running back to line up like that yeah. because when you get in the ball, line up like it's going down here, be ready yeah. to get it. I've never seen that before. And right now, you had the Springfield JV team in, coach. And this JV team gave up zero points Monday night to Greenbrier. Yes, it did. The, Green, the Springfield Junior Varsity team went to Greenbrier and beat the Greenbrier Bobcats 28 0 Monday night. Got a chance to get some experience tonight. Going to hand to the fullback again. Going to be met there by number two and number 51. Number two, Hunter Gardner. And number 51, Lee, in on the tackle. Clock moving with down inside two minutes, a minute 50 left. Clarksville just going to run run the football. And number 52, Camden, Camden Hollinsworth, the linebacker there, sophomore, 5'8", 220. He's meeting them guards, Coach. Yes, he is. He's banging. And, <laughs> and we got a stoppage of play here. Let's see what he calls. That's going to be on Clarksville. He's coming right downhill, no hesitation. Yes, and he is. And meeting them guards. He's reading them, he's reading them guards. He's standing them up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, It'll be a penalty on Clarksville. I know this is Clarksville's, you know, JV also, but he's standing them up better than the, you know, the starters did tonight. He sure is. It'll be second down and 11 for Clarksville. Going to hand off number 23, trying to get to the sideline. Gets to the sideline, and he's going to be tackled down around the four-yard line. Going to be chased down there by number 31 for Springfield. Elijah Barbie. First time we've called Elijah's name this year. 54 seconds left in the game. And it's first and goal. Just going to hand it to the well, the quarterback just going to keep it. Great play. And he's going to go down about the five-yard line. And, T, that should be the last play they run. That'll be it. I think they're just going to let the time run out here. And the Jackets, the second half this t- tonight, they, they came down the third quarter. Clarksville blew it open. Well, they started going to run a play, Coach? Clarksville looks like they're going to run a play. Going to hand it to the fullback, and he's going to score. And they tack on a different, a, another score with 15 seconds left, making the score 41 to seven. And T, I thought they'd just take a knee and let the time run out, but now they decide to tack on another score. I think that I think I think Coach didn't want that. I think the young guys just did it. Yeah. Got a different kicker in to try the extra point. The extra point. Snaps down, kicks up, and the kick is good. Going to make the score 42 to 7. 15 seconds left in the game. And T, on this one, this may be the best thing. Just put this one behind you and forget it. Coach Wilson, that's Vinny's clapping like, okay. But I don't think Coach Shelby wanted that play ran. No. I give it a bit of a doubt, but as soon as the play ran, he literally dropped his head down and hands on his knees like, why did you just run the play? Yeah, but I think you put the, those young guys in, you don't tell them nothing because they're going to try to run the ball oh, yeah. and score a touchdown. 
I think he would have preferred they just stay in the huddle. And this will be a learning experience for the Jags tonight. Uh, and we saw some great things and we saw some bad things. But everything is a learning experience for this young team. Yeah. And how much has Clarksville improved since last year? They've improved some. But honestly, because they, they made a lot of mistakes tonight themselves. And, you know, running up in their 6A opponents, they'll catch a couple losses themselves. Oh, yeah. I think they are on the schedule to play beach somewhere along the line. And if you – honestly, the game plan against uh, Clarksville, you know, you get a good front seven and stuff that – at dive play, they don't have nothing. And then, you know, you put them well, obvious passing down. The they line didn't line pass the ball tonight no. officially at all. And it's all you got to do. And, you know, the Jackets, we're young, we're learning. We, we ask all the fans keep sticking with us, baby. It's going to be a, a, a journey and – Kicks away, going to be fielded there and downed. And T is downed at the one-yard line. And it's a running clock, so that's it, Coach. So that'll be your ball game. And the inaugural battle for the bridge goes to Clarksville by a score of 42-7. to 7. 